COVID-19 halted all tourism in 2020 and recovery was slow in 2021. This put airlines on the brink of bankruptcy. More than 4,000 flights that were scheduled for Friday and Saturday have been cancelled. Lockdowns that have followed were always going to take an incredible toll on the travel and tourism sector. With Air Malta being no exception. Following the EU's approval, many governments across Europe have intervened with subsidies to save their national airlines. In April, Malta's finance minister Clyde Caruana asked Brussels for permission to pump 290 million euros across five years into Air Malta in a last-ditch attempt to save the ailing airline from years of losses and turn it into a profit-making enterprise. But how has our national airline come to this? Tourism is Malta's lifeblood, and where the welfare of the island is concerned, it's logical that Malta herself should have control. Air Malta had a turbulent takeoff. At its inception in 1973, the company was immediately a subject of great controversy. At the time, Prime Minister Mintoff secured a bargain deal with East Pakistan's national airline to buy aircraft, assist management and train staff, taking advantage of Pakistan's volatile political situation at the time. The Nationalist Party wasn't too complimentary about the deal, even questioning the plane's ability to fly. From then onwards, the management of Air Malta would forever be a political pawn, with every successive government promising to turn the airline into a great success. Air Malta enjoyed good results in its early years. However, in the early 2000s, the airline failed to adapt to the changing times, and the company was increasingly used as an electoral tool, such as offering jobs in exchange for votes. This led to the company making massive losses. And while in some years Air Malta turned a profit, it was only the fruit of one-off sales of assets. Today, Air Malta has an operating loss of 150 million euros and is currently losing over 170,000 euros a day. Why can't the government bail out its national airline like Germany did with Lufthansa? Well, here is where European regulations come in and complicate the situation. Under normal circumstances, European Union governments are forbidden from giving financial support or state aid to private or even state entities. This is to ensure that a company's success is not thanks to taxpayer money. In this way, a level playing field among all EU countries is ensured. However, the European Commission, which decides on state aid, is turning a blind eye due to the pandemic and is allowing subsidisation only after the airline and the government pass a rigorous technical procedure. Having a national airline is of strategic importance. That's why Malta has asked Brussels for permission to pump 290 million euros across five years into Air Malta in a last-ditch attempt to save the airline. According to Finance Minister Clyde Caruana, discussions with the European Commission are coming to an end. The outcome of these discussions at the time of recording is yet unknown. However, recent changes may suggest a new approach the airline may be taking. Payroll costs are too high, which is why the first step seems to be halving the workforce to save 15 million euros per year. The approach was described as a stark contrast to the various approaches taken historically with respect to Air Malta. And halving the staff of the national airline won't go down too well especially months before an election. The government has promised to secure these jobs by giving employees work in other government entities. Other reported changes include a revised strategy. The long-haul flights proposed under Conrad Mitzi's administration will be scrapped entirely. Other unprofitable routes will also be axed. Instead, the plan is to make Air Malta a European network carrier creating a base abroad and flying within other countries, such as running domestic Italian flights. Whether this will work remains to be seen, especially in light of Italian national airline Alitalia's failure to run profitable domestic flights in the face of competition from local rail companies.
The closure of national airlines is not something new. Only last year, Italy announced the liquidation of Alitalia. The European Commission therefore prefers that the struggling air Malta be closed with a new company established in its place. This would possibly mean that Air Malta's losses are written off and the new airline would not be burdened with old debts. Whether or not the EU allows Malta to subsidise Air Malta remains to be seen. What is certain, however, is that drastic changes will need to take place, especially if Malta is serious about giving its national airline a fighting chance.